Welcome to Willard Church of the Nazareth. We're glad you're here. We can't wait to share the service with you.
If you would, turn in your Bibles to Matthew 13. Matthew 13. We're going to be looking at the parable of the sower. I, I did a sermon series on parables, and I kind of skipped over this one. And um, I guess I didn't realize how important this parable was. And I, and I pray today, man, we get this. This has been challenging me this week. Uh, this parable is unique. It's different because um, Jesus gives it, but he also gives an explanation for it. So it's amazing in that. We, we, get, we don't have to guess. We don't have to interpret. We don't have to pray about it. Uh, well, we do. But uh, he gives us the meaning behind it, right? And there's something that happens in the middle of it that generally we skip over when we're teaching on it. But I think it's crucial for us today. There's, there's a message here with that. Would, would you just stand in honor of God's word? Matthew 13, beginning at verse 1. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow a seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Can, can you just underline that in your Bible? Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to people in parables? He replies, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this, people's hearts have become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what this parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to somebody who hears the words and once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. This is God's word. Father, we thank you for it. Lord, we pray that it would sink down deep into our hearts. Father, I pray that you would remove the calluses, that you would remove the scales, that you would soften our hearts, Lord. Open our eyes, open our ears, so that we can receive it, Lord. And I pray that we would accept it and align our lives to it. Lord, you, you have right of way. Speak to us through this word, through your word, Lord. And may it bring life. Lord, we love you and we give you all praise. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> when Jesus came, he didn't just come to bring the forgiveness of sins. Yes, that's what happened, right? 
Yes, God made a way for mankind to be reconciled to himself, but he was also doing something else. He brought the kingdom of God to earth. Repentance and forgiveness is the foundation for that kingdom, right? That's what it's built upon. That is the message of the seed. Through the seed, the parable shows us that some enter the kingdom and some don't, right? Uh, I've been asked, I think, by John Prochi and other people, what is the kingdom of God? Right? It's nothing less than the power of God in heaven entering the world to heal every brokenness in every dimension of the human life, spiritually, physically, mentally, right? The the kingdom of God comes into our life. The power, that power comes into our life and into our world. And it gives us a purpose for our life. That's what we're called to. A a job that won't be completed, though, until Jesus comes back. Until that day happens, our purpose is to join him in bringing this kingdom to this earth, right? He calls us and empowers us to step into the brokenness and bring his healing, his completeness to this world. We do it primarily through sharing the message of this kingdom, right? Verse 19 says that when anyone hears the message about the kingdom, that's what it's titled, right? The message about the kingdom, that is the gospel message, the seed. This parable is really talking about how people become a part of that kingdom and and why they don't. How, how do people become part of the kingdom of God? We, will, we know what Romans 10, 17 says, right? Faith comes from hearing the message. Faith comes from hearing. The kingdom of God comes by hearing the message, the, the word of God, right? About Christ and what he's done. That's how the seed is sown, So a message is is going out, but notice not everyone hears it. Not everyone understands it. Or some people do hear it. Some people do accept it, right? But it withers away. It's choked away. Now, the, the message of the kingdom is not just about salvation. That's where it starts, right? That's the first part. But it's also about how to live this life, how to be of that kingdom and what we're supposed to do to bring this kingdom to this earth. So a, a big, I guess, point that I want us to get and that I want us to chew on, that I want us to, to see and to hear and to understand and wrestle with is the, a simple question. Are we listening? Are, are we listening to the word of God, right? Are we accepting the word? It's interesting because earthly kingdoms don't come by hearing. God's kingdom is 100% unusual. How do earthly kingdoms come? They come through coercion. They come through force, right? Kingdoms grow by conquering land, by conquering people. Even man-made religions grow in that way, right? Islam is largely spread through the sword, through force. The kingdom of God comes in a radically different way, though. And it threw a lot of people off. Even people like John the Baptist. You remember that message? A lot of people don't like the chosen, but I actually got something about John the Baptist that I had never seen before uh, through the chosen, right? John believed in Jesus. He did. Uh, Remember when he baptized him? He knew who he was. He knew he was the Messiah. He heard the voice of God from heaven. But there came a point when he was in prison, right? After a while sitting there, John started to doubt because he didn't see the kingdom of God coming like he thought it would come, like he expected it to come. Do you remember what he does? He sends a messenger to Jesus 
And he says, are you really the one? He knew he was the one, right? He heard the message. He heard the voice of God. Are you really the one? Are you really the Messiah? Are you really the one who's bringing the kingdom? Or should we look for somebody else? That's what happens when our idea of the kingdom doesn't work out like we should. Our life doesn't work out like we should. Are you really God? Are you really a part of my life, right? Or should we look for someone else? John just didn't get how the kingdom of God would come. He expected it to come like every other kingdom, through force, through conquering. We talked about the Romans. We talked about the Babylonians. We talked about the Greeks a lot lately. Their kingdoms came through the sword. That's how they came, right? But the kingdom of God doesn't come that way. In fact, it doesn't work if it comes that way. It doesn't work if it comes by force. It doesn't work if it comes through coercion. Forcing somebody to be baptized doesn't make that person a follower of Jesus Christ, right? Faith comes by hearing the word about Christ and accepting it and receiving it. You can't be brought into the kingdom of God. You can't be brought into, you can't come in because your parents bring you in, right? I would like nothing better than to physically bring my kids into the kingdom of God, but it will never work that way, right? No one can be forced. You can only come by hearing and accepting the word of God about Christ. For those of you who have heard that message and have accepted that message, isn't that how it works, right? Isn't that what you've been experiencing? You heard the message, a seed was planted in your heart, right? Something inside of you burned, something inside of you welled up, and you said, this is truth. The Holy Spirit testified to you that this is the word of God. You were convicted by it. You knew you were a sinner, right? You knew you were outside his kingdom. You knew you were on your way to hell. Nobody had to convince you of that. You knew you were separated from God, but you heard the amazing message that God came down, put on flesh, and dwelled among us. You heard that he went to the cross And on the cross, he paid the price that our sins, my sins, your sins deserve. He took our place and he died. But the Father rose him from the dead, right? And in doing that, sin and death was conquered. We heard that message. We believed that message. We accepted that seed that was put inside of us, right? And we left our old life. And we were born again into this new life, into this new kingdom. By God's grace, we were reconciled to him. That's what we believe. Faith came to us by hearing, right? If that's true, and if there are people out there that don't know Christ, right, that are not reconciled to God, then how important is it for us to share with our mouths the word of God. If you're a follower of Christ, I'm here to tell you that is your purpose. To share the word of God with your mouth or through writing, if somebody reads it, right? Are we doing that? Is that the mission of our church? It's in our motto, right? We were once friends, but now we're family, on a great mission. That's our mission, right? Are we really on that mission or do we just come to church? We know what Jesus said, Matthew 9, 37. The harvest is plentiful. plentiful. Are there plenty of people that don't know Jesus Christ around us? True, right? But the workers are few. Also true. We're not carrying on the work that God's called us to. Are we? The workers are few. The truth is that there's not many people who are willing to share the message, to speak it, right? We'll say things like, oh, you know what? Um, We're going to live our life in a way that is a testimony to God and people can see that, my witness through the way I live my life. Are you really living that great of a life, first of all? That great of a testimony? Our testimony should back up our words, back up 
Our words have to come, though. Yeah, we better live out our faith, right? But we have to speak the words. We have to share that. Faith comes by hearing. Why don't we share? Because it's scary, right? It's, it's scary. We, we think, what are people going to think of us if we do? People are going to think we're crazy. And, and let me just throw it out there. They will. That's going to happen. You're going to be the freak if you do that. Can we just embrace that, though? Can we just embrace the freak? <laughs> like, seriously? Right? Just embrace being weird. Some of you, I'm looking at you, Mike, you're right there already. <laughs> Right? 1 Corinthians 118. This, this is it. Right? For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us, right, who are being saved, it is the power of God. Is this not 100% truth? Right? It is foolishness to people. The, the one reason why we're scared to share it, right, it sounds crazy. God came down 2,000 years ago and died on a cross for us so that he could pay for our sins. I just have to believe that. I don't have to actually live in a way that earns that. I just have to believe it and accept it. And for that reason, I'm going to be saved? Yes, right? But to people who don't get it, mm, it's crazy. People will laugh at it. People will scorn it. They'll reject it. The message doesn't come like other kingdoms come, through, through, through man-made power, right? No, it is the word of God. Everything about this message is upside down. Everything about it. That's why it doesn't make sense. It's all upside down from what our culture teaches, right? The way to be rich is to give your money away? Really? Whoever wants to be first must be last? We're called to be a servant. We're not called to be at the top, right? That American Christianity tells us growth comes through suffering. What a crazy message. Sounds crazy to everyone but us. For, for those of us who have accepted it, for those of us who have been saved by it, it is the power of God, right? It is truth to us. When, when somebody asks me, why do I believe in this, right? That question will come up to you. Why do you believe in, in Jesus Christ and this message? Well, it's simple. The power of God has flipped my life upside down. The power of God has wrecked my life. The power of God has changed my life, and I'm a part of this new kingdom, and I want to be all about it, right? He's given me a new life. He's taken me out of death. I felt that. I, I felt that selfish life. I lived that selfish life, right? And he's totally changed everything. Well, James, I, I, I don't know if I could say that. I don't know if that much has changed in my life. Well, this parable might address that. It might be talking to you. There might be a reason for that. Verse 22, the seed falling among the thorns refers to somebody who hears the word, right? Somebody who's accepted it, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. Is that you? Is that me? We, we all say no, right? But that's every one of us to some degree. Every one of us, make no mistake about it, right? The person who hears the word and understands it, what's going to be the result? It yields a lot of fruit. Does your life yield a lot of fruit? If it doesn't, what's choking it, right? What's choking it? What kind of soil? Does your life show that you have? Do you hear it? Do you understand it? I'm always amazed about how we do announcements, just so you know, there's a Sunday school Wednesday night emphasis coming up, just in case you missed it the first time, right? Come four out of the five Sundays, get a free t-shirt. 
Anybody miss that the first time we said it? Be honest, right? I'm always amazed at how many times we miss the announcements. It's in the, I say it, it's in the bulletin, it's in your email, but I'm just like you guys. I'm missing the stuff. I probably say it and miss it. I don't know. How much stuff are we missing? Do we have ears that hear? And do we understand? Are we workers in the kingdom? Wrestle with that, will you? Are we spreading the seed that has been entrusted to us? Romans 10, 17, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. There it is. We need to share the message of the word. We need to share what's contained in the word of God, right, about Jesus Christ. We have little slips of paper in the back there next to those Bibles. You can have a Bible if you don't have one. They're nice life application study Bibles. Take one, please. Right? We want to share the word. But also back there, there's papers about how to share your faith, how to take somebody down the Romans road and share the literal word of God that leads to salvation, that talks about Jesus Christ. Take one with you. You should know that. Right? Share your testimony about what Christ has done in your life. Look for opportunities and just embrace being the freak. Embrace being the weird person. When I was a teenager, one of my best friends didn't know Christ. I shared the gospel with that person, and I was scared to death. I did not want to do it, right? But I felt the Lord leading me to do that. Heart pounding out of my chest. Felt stupid. And he took it like it was a stupid message. He rejected it. There came another point where the Holy Spirit said to speak it, right? And I shared it again, and I crashed and burned again. He didn't accept it. He rejected it. 2020, my buddy passed away. 46 years old. He died. His mom told me that he accepted the message, though a few years before that. Not from me, right? Seeds don't always germinate when we throw them out there. But don't let that stop you. Throw it out there. Share it with it. Hey, start off like this. You might think I'm totally crazy, right? But can I just tell you about Jesus Christ? I'm worried about the direction you're heading. I see what this life that you're living leads to, and it's destruction. But I've got good news, right? Let me tell you about what Christ did. Let me tell you about how Christ changed my life. Seeds don't always germinate when you throw them. Still throw them out. If you have loved ones, pray that their hearts are soft. Pray that their eyes and ears are open. Pray that they accept the message. And if they do, whew, what's this passage tell us? We better come alongside people. Because this world is going to try to choke that message away. Right? We better stand beside people when we get the privilege of, of helping them find Christ. That's our calling. That's our mission, my friends. The Church of the Nazarene. Any church that preaches Jesus Christ. Right? That's all our mission. Well, why doesn't God just come down and do a miracle? Have you ever thought that? I, I wondered that when I was a teenager. Just do some miracles and show everyone. But do you remember Luke 16? Jesus told a story about a rich man and a man named Lazarus. They both died. Lazarus went to be with Abraham, and the rich man went to Hades where he was in torment. The rich man called out to Abraham, do you remember, and said, please send Lazarus to my brothers to warn them about this place. And Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets let them listen to them. He's like, no, no, no. If somebody rises from the dead, if somebody comes back from the dead, right, and they go to them, then they'll listen. Then they'll hear that message. Then they'll repent. And Abraham said, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't be convinced by somebody rising from the dead. My friends, that's the truth of it, right? God did come down. Jesus became the visible image of God. He did miracles. He raised people from the dead. He healed every sickness, right? Drove out demons. And yet what happened? Many people missed it. 
many people didn't accept it, right? The religious leaders were watching for the Messiah. They were looking for the signs, and he performed every one of those signs, and they still missed it. How is that possible? How is that possible? Here's the truth. Not everyone has ears to hear. Not everyone in here has ears to hear. We know that with announcements. But unfortunately, it's with the word of God as well. Not everybody wants to know the truth, right? Some people will avoid the truth just so they can keep on living the life that they want to. Want a good example? How many people have you shared the truth about politics to? And they totally didn't listen, right? You tried. Man, you got on Facebook, you, 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 you shared those memes, you shared those posts, you're putting it out there, right? People just want to believe what they want to believe. And they'll discount it. They'll make up any reason not to buy into it, right? We see that with, with that. We want to be blind. And God gives that to us. He gives us what we want. You, you don't want to hear the truth? I'll help you, right? I'll add some calluses to the, what you've already put on your heart. Mm. A lot of us hate it when the other political side doesn't listen to truth. But here's the thing. That is often you and I with the word of God. We know what the Bible says. We know what the word of God says, but we don't like that message. And so we find an excuse to close our eyes. It, it, the word says people close their eyes, right? We, we put the earmuffs on. The truth's there. The truth could be heard, but we don't want to hear it, right? This is, this is a warning that all of us really need to listen to this morning. And I wish everybody was listening, but I know not everybody is. What if we did, though? What if that was our prayer, right? All of us should be asking, do, do I have ears to hear, Lord? What am, I, what am I tuning out? What am I ignoring, right, from your word? Verses 13 through 16 in that Matthew passage, will you just leak, listen to the, the words about hearing and seeing and perceiving and understanding? This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You're, you're in church, right? We're in church, but we're not understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's hearts has become calloused. They hardly hear with their eyes, and they have, um, with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are you because they see, and your ears because they hear. This is why we start off when we word to God. Lord, open eyes, open ears. That's, why, that's what our prayer is, and I pray you would, you would join me in that when I do pray, right? That's what I pray for myself. That's what I want for my family, right? And that's what I want for all of us. Lord, soften our hearts, right? We put calluses on our own hearts. Would you remove those calluses? Would you soften them so that we can accept it, right? Not every one of us will hear. Man, that, that should scare us. Or we might hear, but the deceitfulness of wealth chokes the message, right? If Jesus Christ himself can live on this earth and teach and preach and people don't hear it and apply it, then surely that same thing's going to happen today. Don't let it be you, though, right? I want us to be reading the Bible. We've been talking about that, talking about that, talking about that, right? But I, I want the word to penetrate our hearts and change us. I want us to align ourselves to it. And so, again, I just want to ask you, 
Are you listening? Are you listening with the intent to align your life to what you're reading? That's the big question. Or are we just closing our eyes, covering our ears? I'm pleading with us to get this. Everything hinges on this, right? Getting into the kingdom hinges on this. Staying in the kingdom hinges on this. Building the kingdom hinges on this. If you, if you read the Bible, you often see these things where people harden their hearts to the word of God. They keep ignoring it, and just God gives it to them, right? The Bible talks about people being asleep. The church in North America is asleep today. We need to wake up. Brent taught Wednesday out of Ephesians, and, and the word where it says they were tossed back and forth by false doctrine. And that's because they're not in the word. They're not listening to it, right? Aaron shared something to with me that said 15% of people in churches, 15% of those who call themselves Christians cast spells on people. How in the world could we ever think that that's right, right? It's because we're not in this. We're not aligning our lives to this. We just make Christianity whatever we want to make it. Oh, that sounds good to me. I'll, I'll add that in there. Right? And we create this false savior, this false Christianity. We, we, we create idols. My friends, the first thing that you do in your day should be to get in the word of God. I know some of you are like, man, I'm just better at nighttime. No, no. Like, I, I know one person that is really good at having their quiet time at night. And I know 99 that say they're going to have their quiet time at night, but it ends up messing up, Right? Get in the word. It is a lamp unto your feet. You do not want to be walking in this dark world without that lamp. Get into it at night again, right? That's maybe your power time, your good time, right? But put God first in your life. I want to challenge you with that. Do that. Discipline your life. Do it, right? And it will be something that you crave, something that you really enjoy. Your attitude of mind, your willingness to hear will affect what you really hear. Your willingness to receive, to accept, and to embrace will affect how much you get out of what is being read. That's the most important thing when you're reading the Word of God is your attitude, your, your willingness to be taught, to be corrected, to be rebuked. Have you ever wondered why Jesus says the meek shall inherit the earth? The, the meaning of the word meek is to be teachable. To be teachable. Meek people are able to be corrected because they aren't full of pride. Right? They don't pretend to be perfect. Their ears are open. Their hearts are soft. And that's why they inherit the earth. We need to be meek people. The culture of America, right, doesn't places no value on meek people. But the kingdom of God is upside down and places so much value on that position. Matthew 13, verse 15. It's a quote from Isaiah 6, 9 through 10. For this people's hearts have become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Wow, do you need healed? Do you need healed from your anxiety? Do you need healed from whatever's going on in your life? This is talking to us. The, the context of this in Isaiah involves idolatry. In other words, listen to this. If you have ears that don't hear and eyes who don't see, guess what you are? You're just like the idols that you worship, right? You're becoming the idols that you worship. That's biblical. Idols have eyes but can't see, ears but can't hear. The people in Israel who are involved in idolatry in Isaiah 6, they, they become the idols that they worship. They got to a place where they could hardly hear the word of God. Is that you today? Worshiping idols blinds us to the message of God. How do you know what an idol is in your life? If there's something in your life that if God were to come down and say, James, I want you to get rid of that, and you would become extremely mad at him, whatever that thing is, 
That's an idol. It is. Money is one that's mentioned here in this passage. Money's not bad, right? Nothing wrong with money, but it's going to be bad if we put it in the place of God. If God were to come to you and say, hey, I want you to give it all away, right? Would you hang on to it and be like, no way, no way, you know, I'm going to let you ask me that. That's an idol then. When, when money is where we put our trust, we have faith in money as long as we have enough in the bank account. We, we feel peace as long as we have enough in our bank account, right? We, we can trust in that. Man, that's, that's, if that's the source of hope, that's an idol in your life. Who doesn't struggle with that, though, right? You can look to another person to be your source of hope. People are good, but they can't take the place of God. If they do, they'll blind you to the word. You'll have to compromise the word in order to keep that person in your life a lot of times, in order to keep that person happy because you don't want them to leave because they're your source of hope. They're your source of peace, right? They're, they're an idol, though. If you hate somebody and the word of God says to forgive them, if that hate is all you have left, right, don't ask me to give up this hate. That's an idol. That will blind you to the word of God. You'll, you'll look over all those passages about forgiveness. Right? That's how idols work. We become like the idols, blind and we don't hear. Blind to the kingdom word. Amen? Stand with me. I don't know what you struggle with. They are often good things, but when you put them in place of God, that's when they blind you to the word of God. That's when they become idols. They, they have a, a power to result in the word and the message being choked out. Ask the Lord to reveal those to you. Repent of those things. Lay those things down, right I pray that as a church, that we're on mission. We're on mission to share the word of God in whatever way that God calls us to do it. My friends, we have to be people that speak it. We have to be people that communicate it. That's our calling in this kingdom. But my friends, we also have to be people that are in it, that are in the word of God right and not just people that read it, not just people who are checking off the box, yes, I read today, but we are people that pray, Lord, give us soft hearts, give us open ears, open eyes, right, so that we can receive your message, so that we can be transformed by it. I challenged you this week, this coming week, right? You come to church, come to discipleship class, Wednesday night, 6.30, Sunday morning, 9.30, Right? Good classes, good teachers. Another opportunity to be in the word of God. Amen? Amen? Pray with me. Take advantage of it. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that we would all surrender our lives to you completely. I pray that we would all pick up our cross, die to ourselves, and fully live for you. Father, I pray that that would be a daily decision that we make, probably more than just a daily decision that we make, Lord. Father, we want to be in line with your word. Father, do not let us be blinded. Do not let our ears be closed to what you have for us. Lord, speak to us. May we, may we have that willing heart that actually wants to be in the words that we can hear so that we can know how we should live, what needs to change in our lives, Lord. Lord, if there's calluses, if there's a hardness on anybody's heart today, Lord, I pray that you would remove it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that if there's anybody who doesn't know you and they realize today that they're living for themselves. They're living for this world, Lord. Father, I pray that they would repent, that they would hear your message today saying, follow me, and I pray that they would turn their life around and follow you, and I pray that you'd give them a new life, that you would dwell with them in their hearts, Lord, that you would, that you would make them a new person, Lord. 
Father, we entrust ourselves to you. We believe that it is by your death that we can be saved, that we can be reconciled to you. And, and you are the hope that we profess with our mouths, Lord. Lord, we love you and we give you praise. In your name we pray, amen.